Here. Dreffel. Hurt. Mendez. Bully. Roten. Sledge. Good. Suara. Vice Chair is here. Syracuse. Tombs. Ben Reese and Bircher. Okay, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is a quorum. We can begin with the consent agenda. I'll read through the titles. Let me know if anything needs to be pulled off. Currently on consent are RS 2022 1640, 1641, 1643, 1647. 1648, 1649, 1650, 1651, 1652, 1653, and 1654. Do any of those resolutions need to come off of the consent agenda? I'll read. Uh, I did say 1651. Okay. Can, do we need to take that off consent? Okay, we'll take it off consent and let you abstain. Let me make a note of that right now. So I will read through the titles of the items on consent. If, if you change your mind and want to take something off, just let me know. So on consent is RS 2022, 1640, Allen Welsh and Suara approves a grant from the State of Tennessee Administrative Office of the Courts to Davidson County Juvenile Court for the provision of interpreter translation services for parties with limited English proficiency. Next on consent is RS 2022 1641. Sponsors Alan Welsh and Suara approves a grant for the Tennessee Administrative Office of the Courts to the Metropolitan Government for the provision of interpretation translation services for court hearings which involve parties with limited English proficiency in the Davidson County Trial Courts. Next on consent is RS 2022 1643. Sponsors Parker and Allen. This authorizes the Metropolitan Mayor to submit the 2022 to 2023 annual update to the 2018 2023 consolidated plan for housing and community development to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Next on consent is RS 2022-1645. Sponsors, whoops, that's not on consent. I don't think. Nope. Sorry. Next on consent is RS 2022-1647. Sponsors Allen and Bradford approves a grant from the Tennessee Arts Commission to the Metropolitan Arts Commission for funding to nonprofit organizations to nurture artists, art organizations, and art sponsors in Davidson County. Next on consent is RS 2022-1648. Sponsors Allen and Evans. This approves a modification to the fire marshal's office fee sped schedule. Next on consent is RS 2022-1649. Sponsors Allen Evans, Welsh, and Suara. This approves a grant for the Tennessee Department of Health to the Metro Board of Health to achieve sustained control and enhance prevention to eventually eliminate tuberculosis as a public health threat in Tennessee. Next on consent is RS 2022-1650. Sponsors Allen Evans and Bradford. This approves a grant from the Friends of Metro Animal Care and Control to the Metro Board of Health to provide funding for the Safety Net Program, Emergency Medical Care for Shelter Animals and Foster behavioral support. Next on consent is RS 2022-1652. Sponsors Allen Evans and Welsh. This approves Amendment 3 to a grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to the Metro Board of Health for the ongoing collection of data on ambient air concentrations for fine particulate matter in Nashville, Tennessee. Next on consent is RS 2022-1653. Sponsors Allen, Bradford, Gamble, and Suara. This approves an agreement between the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Nashville Public Library to strengthen and expand small business development in the local area. And final resolution on consent is RS 2022-1654. Sponsors Allen and Young approves an application for a congestion management air quality improvement grant and accepting a CMAC grant through an intergovernmental agreement from the Tennessee Department of Transportation to the Nashville Department of Transportation and Multimodal Infrastructure for the acceptance of work to implement the Nashville Connector Transportation Demand Management System. Those are the items on consent. Do any of those need to be pulled? Do I have a motion to approve the items on consent? I see a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Say aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? We recommend approval. Nine in favor, zero, eight. Did we lose somebody? One, two, okay. Eight in favor. Zero against, zero not voting. 
Now we'll back up to RS 2022-1590. Sponsor Sledge approves a $100,000 from the General Fund Reserve Fund for the purchase of equipment and building repairs for various departments of the Metro Government of Nashville and Davidson County. Collect Council Member Sledge. Do I have a motion from the committee? Oh, right. Then moved and seconded, Council Member Sledge. You need power. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So this request um, I initially had put in um, actually back when we were discussing in the budget, we, it was part of the list that we went through, part of the list that was scored. Uh, when it came into the when it came to the chair's substitute, I think the chair made a note that you would like to fund at least there are two stations that are funded in here, and I'll explain those to fund at least one of those. Um, it was discussed to be placed into the 4% legislation that was considered and passed by this body at last meeting. It was not in that uh, legislation. So I had filed this separately just in the course of the budget conversations just to have another tool or option. And so this is the option that I have. The, the two stations that will be funded, one is for basically the northern end of the fairgrounds. Um, we are about to be putting in a fairly large outbound um, WeGo transit station um, because of the increased events that are occurring on campus. There is a B-cycle station that is located on the southern end oh. of the campus, but remember the Fairgrounds campus is 120 acres. And so this northern end would allow for usage, especially right at a BRT light stop um, for the 52. Um, the other station would be at Edge Hill Public Library. And the reason that I've included this one is because I think folks are probably aware right now, 12th Avenue South is going through, um, bike lanes are being constructed. A lot more than just bike lanes are going into this redesign of 12th, however. There are mid-block crossings, there are consolidated um, sheltered bus stops. It is a overhaul that has taken a good long while, about five years to this point to get, to get there. Um, there is a B-cycle station on the northern end of 12th Avenue South, which is in the Gulch. And there are actually two stations that are located on the southern end of this stretch in 12th Avenue South in 12th South. One's at Sevier Park and one is on a private um, parcel that's actually in District 18. But there is no station in the middle. And in the middle sits Edge Hill. Um, and as folks probably saw, uh, the public library system over the last six weeks has been announcing a partnership with B-Cycle in which you can check out um, for free a, a, a key fob or a fob that'll allow you to have a week's free use of a B-Cycle. They just last week, I believe, expanded that to all libraries, including community libraries like the Edge Hill Library. Um, Edge Hill has had a uh, very deep history of bike usage. Um, the Edge Hill Bike uh, Club was um, founded there and was extremely popular among kids um, several years ago and adults in usage. The, the, the issue that I'm trying to resolve is there's a huge gap in our, in our e-cycle network and especially is now these um, uh, bicycles are gonna be available for free for usage um, that Folks on the northern end of 12th Avenue South who will be able to enjoy the infrastructure that's coming forth and people on the south end of 12th Avenue South will be able to enjoy this infrastructure through bike share programming and the folks in the middle won't. Um, and so that's why I'm trying to get this B-cycle station in so that you can go to the Edge Hill Library, you could check out a FOB and you could ride right from there and you could take either way you need to go. Right now in design are the Edge Hill Avenue bike lanes so soon we will have one piece more toward a network of protective bike lanes. Um, and so for me, this is the effort to say, we're gonna ensure that everyone along this stretch has equal access um, to bike share, um, bike share, uh, I have to say facilities. Now, a concern was raised from Director Alarcon a little while back in the conversation we had about um, that there's gonna be an RFP put out for bike share facilities and a concern that if B-Cycle is not chosen as the bike share facility, what will we do with those stations? I do understand that concern. I asked about timeline on that. My understanding from our conversation was that it could be six months until somebody is selected and implemented, and it could still possibly be B-Cycle. And so in the meantime, I believe that there's a, there's a need for this. I know there's a need for this. And to be able to say, yes, we think that this is important. Yes, we know that we have a gap in our infrastructure. Um, I, this is the way that I think we fill that gap and that we show that we're committed to creating a real network. Before that station went in on the southern end of the fairgrounds, there was no, not one bike share network between uh, 
the bike share station between the east side of 12th and Murfreesboro Pike. Like nobody, basically nobody in District 17 could access a bike share uh, station, could, ac could access B cycles. So I'm trying to change that. I've tried to work throughout the budget process to do this. And I'm kind of down to this <laughs> as, um, and this, you know, this allocation from the 4% fund now in fiscal year 23, whereas last, the last legislation was fiscal year 22 leftover funds from 4%. This is out of our new allocations as revenues have come in. Um, and so the greatest thing I can do is just ask members to support creating this equitable network where the infrastructure is coming in and where people use bikes and need them for basic transportation. Thank you, Chair, I know it was a bit long-winded. Good, good explanation. Other comments or questions? Councilmember Suara. Thank you, Chair. I, I guess my question is uh, with regards to the RFP and if somebody else is selected, are this infrastructure not something that other entities can use and I don't know what they look like. Just for clarification, if you're building something where they could hold a bicycle and you had to move out, somebody else come in, do you have to take it with you or destroy it? I don't know how that impacts that. So just, just some clarification. Good question. Is there someone from uh, NDOT that can answer that question? I hope. And someone from the administration maybe weigh in? Oh, I'm sorry, NDOT, thank you for being here. There you go. Good evening, Mary Peoples and uh, Council Liaison. Uh, Director Alicorn is not on site at this time, but we sh I know that she would like to have more discussion about this. Um, earlier today, we were discussing some of the options that she would like to weigh in on. So I don't have that information for Council Member Sledge's questions today, but we would like to discuss it. Um, is that something that you think you could provide us with before we would consider it on the council floor tomorrow or do we need to defer? I'm sure we can and I'm act actively trying to reach her. I'm sure she might be on site. I just haven't been able to reach her at this time. Okay, that does seem important to what we're okay. trying to Okay, we will follow up. Thank you. I appreciate that. Councilmember Sledge. Sorry, you're not Courtney Dunstan. Um, one, one thing I would note in the, to, to the, back to the infrastructure, I think what everybody's familiar with right now when it comes to B-Cycle are stations that look like they're like put into the ground. They are really just sitting on the ground and they're solar powered. What B-Cycle specifically is moving to is actually separated docks to where you're not tied into, is typically like eight or 10 or 15 or 16, um, to where you could put four in one place, you could put seven in one place, it could be wherever, they're individual docks and they're not all linked together. They are all separate, they can be picked up, they can be moved, they can be transferred. So just want everybody to know kind of where, where the technology is at this point. Thank you, that's, that's helpful. Did the administration have, okay, and then Councilmember Ramendez. You're recognized. Well, I was probably gonna ask them the same thing you were gonna ask them. Well, um, okay, so I'm interested, we, we just had a, a big old budget conversation about a month ago about 4% funds and, um, and some people in finance having um, uh, Meltdown's too strong, uh, but issues about the amount of money that we we're adding to the budget in connection with how that would interact with 4% funds. And so I'm, I'm uh, aside from the request for proposal issue, I'm interested in hearing from finance that, you know, they give a green light to this or not. And then really the question, I guess, for Mr. Jamison is, um, is there a way, even if it takes a rule suspension, um, a way to make this to um, get an amendment by tomorrow that alleviates concerns about the RFP issue? The, um, the background I have, I was able to talk to Director Alicon and I hope can address a couple of issues. Um, at the beginning during the budget discussion, we had some items when we were 
at the point where council had submitted their spending requests and we were just counting nickels and looking for quarters in the seat cushions. There were a couple of items that uh, appeared eligible for 4% that were gonna be tight, uh, included the B cycles, uh, historic plaques, uh, finance had some software from treasury that they really wanted. And we had advised the proponents of those that We've got this much room on the top of available 4% funding, but we can do it in 4% if, if we preserve that funding in the budget. And then the council um, had to uh, take some of the 4% money for the uh, uh, amendments that were offered on the last night. So that brought us back down to we were just having to finance only the, the safety priorities and the contractual priorities. Um, so it's it's hit all of us. I mean, finance isn't getting their treasury software. The historic plaques are, are coming back in another day. The And the same thing with the B cycles in terms of why they weren't in the, the 4%. The operational question is, it is, a, it is our understanding that the stations are somewhat unique to the vendor. So B-Cycle is now a, a for-profit entity. It used to be a non-profit and began its uh, contractual relationship with a downtown partnership. It never got to the point where it was generating a profit. Um, that and other concerns prompted NDOT to issue the RFP, which B-Cycle could win, but also possibly may not. And the concern is, do we then risk installation of a station that would be obsolete in, in six months? One thing that might be helpful here is that they are pursuing a pilot, uh, I believe in the fairgrounds area, with respect to the e-bikes that the scooter vendors are allowed to provide under that limited exception. And in that limited area, hopefully they could provide uh, the welcome relief that will allow us to get past the RFP and have a vendor that we know would be going forward, depending on how the RFP comes out. Uh, but we will get with Ms. Alarcon later this evening and, and before tomorrow's meeting and see what else could be done. Yeah, so the operational question is great. I, I'm curious about the finance question. Would the finance director like to help us out there? All right, I think from an operational standpoint, typically um, we wouldn't bring the first paper related to the 4% until we've realized revenue, which has typically been late fall of, of a calendar year. So this would be a departure from that practice. And I appreciate it's a de minimis amount, but it's, it's definitely setting a precedent that we've never contemplated before. Um, I just call balls and strikes. So this is where I'm at. Um, it's fine for one, but but when does one become two, two become six, six become 12, and how did we administratively address this if, if each council member is going to contemplate bringing little ones every single time? Who, who's gonna administer, who's gonna manage this process, and, and how does it reflect on our prioritization process, and, and what does it mean? And, and again, this is a small number, and this one's kind of easier, but I, I hate to take, the lid off the can. Like, I don't know how you put it back on when, when you start this. And so just something to contemplate. I mean, it's $100,000, we can make it work, but I, I guess I would argue you've kind of already taken the bite of the apple. You, you, you spent this money when you made the decision to do the amendments um, and use 4% on that. And, and to use it again now um, and, and create this precedent is not an ideal situation and not the best fiscal practice. Thank you for the direct response. I appreciate it. Um, Chair, I'm, I'm gonna vote against it um, for the same reason I was opposing using 4% funds to make the extra spending work in, in the budget and the idea that uh, we're on the, um, I guess the 19th day of the fiscal year and have collected essentially no revenue yet. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna be opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you. Madam um, Chair, if I could, I'm sorry. Mr. Jameson. I neglected to add one thing. I did note on the information sheet, at least with respect to the fairgrounds, at the very end, they, they list the date where they would anticipate the actual expenditure. And that's not listed until June of 23, which would have the advantage of getting us past the RFP and knowing which vendor we'll be, we'll be dealing with if that is in fact the, the intended allocation or expenditure date. 
Um, can you clarify when you're speaking about that, are you talking about the south one or the? The fairgrounds. The fairgrounds, there were two on the fairgrounds. One is already there or? Okay, so, so this is an the second one. Sun in, in the, the very bottom line where it has the, the Q&A on, is this safety related, was this generate, and so forth. The last question is on the expenditure, anticipated expenditure period, and that's, I think, June of 23, which, which would be helpful, but gets us to the same place. Thank you. So I, I would ask two questions. One, is there, um, is there any loss then in then waiting to fund this when we closer to the time when it might be issued or is there a lead time issue that makes it necessary to, to do this at this point early in the fiscal year when we don't actually have the revenue in hand? So the, the problem with the information sheet is that it is specific to B-Cycle. Okay. So that's so. that's a, a bit of a lock-in that has us a little flummoxed. Okay. Um, I, I would just take a moment of liberty and, and add to Councilmember Mendez's concern, which, which I appreciate. There is no question that this is a great project, and I had it in the chair substitute, at least the ones at the Edge Hill Library. Um, until the last minute and then we were trying to cut funds down and, and, and it, it got moved to 4% and then it got knocked out of 4%. So my other question that I would ask is, are, are there other fund, funding possibilities uh, for, I believe this would be called a one-time project, that will come up during this next fiscal year other than the 4% that we could, in a more fiscally responsible way, look toward? I guess that's the finance or so one over there. when it's um, that's a great question and, and and if we can certainly devote time between that and tomorrow uh, I would note that during the the downtown partnership phase um, what the downtown partnership did somewhat uh, ingeniously was that they would just partner with sponsors I mean every B station out at Vanderbilt was paid for by Vanderbilt um, and they had other partners along those lines if there's that possibility that opens up a, a, a world um, but other funding possibilities I mean I don't I don't see this qualifying for ARP dollars but that's just the beginning uh, right. you may have <laughs> can, you. can I just add to that it, it's not solely a, a funding issue it is the validity of the prioritization process so where we might on July 18th be able to say that in the future we expect there to be revenue in the 4% to fund this but I don't know because there could become more important priorities um, that materialize between now and when we bring that paper. So I just caution again about bringing one-offs um, when not looking at the larger list and the deferred maintenance that we know we have. And again, I, I get that this is a small number and, and it's a project we all support, but we're really towing the line of setting a really bad precedent of just bringing in projects kind of ad hoc and not through the typical vetting and prioritization process. Thank you. Other council member Sledge. Thank you, Chair. I'd, I'd like to, to kind of just gently address some of the issues and then ask legal. In the most recent fund balance, you know, when we get the analysis and the fiscal balances, this was, I mean, I believe what we had in there for 4% was something like one and a half million or something that was already accrued. And plus, this 100,000 wasn't counted as that, this was already counted as, for accounting purposes, supposed to have already been spent. So I guess, I push back a little bit on the idea that the revenues aren't there and also with the acknowledgement that's in the legislation that this is at the finance director's discretion as to when this funding is spent as funds are made available. I would also remind colleagues that, again, I tried to get this in our, our, our other 4% fund request. I tried to get this in every single budget piece I could and it, it, I struggle a little bit with the sense of uh, you know, where will they be more important priorities? And members, if you'll indulge me for just a moment, you know, I sat at the intersection of where this was for a community event in the previous administration, and I, will, I listened, I sat there in the street as we had a closed street event, and I was told, and, and the mayor at the time stood up there and said that you should expect your, told the community, you expect your council members to fight for you. And if they're not fighting for you, then you should ask them why. And I had a member of Congressman Cooper's office sitting right next to me, turn to me and say, what are you gonna do about it? And I was sitting at the intersection, 12th and Edge Hill. 
And I was a year and a half in on the fight for these bike lanes, this redesigned street to make it safer for the communities that live there. So now I'm five years into this fight, trying to make sure that the infrastructure and the services match up. So I just want people to know where I'm coming from here is that I'm taking those words to heart and I'm trying to fight for a community that too many times get told it's not a priority. And we know that, we all know. That. So if there needs to be, as Council Member Mendez suggested, some sort of technical language offered as a late amendment to so where it's not tied to B-cycle, that's fine, we can work through that. What's important to me is that we do make it a priority. We do make this community and this type of infrastructure a priority. Because otherwise, how are we gonna sit here and say, we had an opportunity to, to give a community the chance at free transportation, free transportation on new infrastructure that we all paid for, including this community that would be served most directly. And we said, no, it wasn't a priority. Too many times, that's the answer. So I would ask colleagues, we wanna get a technical amendment in there to fix this B cycle concern, that's fine. But let's not let that stand in the way of the infrastructure. The revenue is not the issue. It can be issued when the revenues are available and the revenues are already available according to our own revenue reports. I tried every way possible. This isn't meant as a way to go around the system. This is me trying to fight for my community. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Other comments or questions? All right, with that, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of RS 2022-1590 say aye. Opposed? I think I heard. How many of us are there? Eight? Nine. Okay, so six in favor, three against. Any not voting? Abstain? Okay. Five in favor, three against, one not voting. Good discussion, tough question. Next is RS 2022 1642 sponsors Allen approves amendment three to a grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to the Metro Department of Finance to provide public assistance pursuant to presidential disaster declaration for costs incurred for severe storms, tornadoes, straight line winds and floodings on March 3rd, 2020. Do I have a motion? I've been moved and seconded. Any questions? Are we sure we got the date right on this one? I think so. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? All right, we recommend approval. Six in favor, sorry, nine in favor, zero against. Anybody not voting? Next is RS 2022 1644, sponsors Tombs, Parker, and Allen. This authorizes the Metro Department Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 3720 Clarksville Pike. Do you have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any questions? Um, I would just ask one, just because I want to get this out there. Um, MDHA files a report every year, which I got a copy of this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Kane. That that just shows what all the um, the great light tech projects that we have are, and um, I would love to have that as along with all the other reports that we get annually listed on the Metro Council resource page. We put it up there today. Awesome. Okay, that's great. Any other comments or questions? All right, seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? We recommend approval. We had good discussion this during um, Affordable Housing Committee, so if you want to, if you weren't here for that, you can go back and watch the video of that and get more detail on this. Next is RS 2022 1645 sponsors Van Rees, Parker and Allen. This authorizes Metro Department and Hous Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 3551, 3557 and 3561 Dickerson Pike. I have a letter from the uh, sponsor to approve. Do you have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Any not voting? Okay, and now I'm remembering that I promised um, Mr. Honeysucker that I would let him begin our meeting with an update on, um, uh, on the waste process. So if I can interrupt going through these and, and invite you up, like I said, I was going to at the beginning with my apologies. Um, Mr. Honeysucker and your team, if you can give us a quick update and then we're gonna be voting on a couple of contracts in a minute anyway. So just tell us what's going on with garbage in Nashville. Ready? 
<laughs> John Honeysucker, the Assistant Director of Waste Services. Thank you all, Council, for allowing us to uh, update you on this. We, uh, again, believe in full transparency, and we'd like to keep you updated on all the things that are taking place within Waste Services. Um, <clears throat> I want to break it down into two different categories. One, I'll give you an operational update. Then I will allow Sharon uh, Smith uh, to come up and talk with you about our service delivery operations. One of the things that you know we've been encountering with uh, our uh, challenges that we went through is dealing with the bankruptcy and different things of that. It has been an ongoing and challenging process, which hopefully we'll come into a, a conclusion here real soon. Uh, I will say this, the sale was finalized Friday morning. Uh, last uh, just a few days ago, Friday morning at about 9 o'clock. So that's why you're seeing a, such a late file to get this before the council. We definitely don't like to bring things in, and we, we believe in full transparency, and we wanted to make you aware. That's one of the reasons we wanted to have an up to, wanted to update you on this. Uh, as for the operational update, as you know, with fleet, it's still challenging at times. We have taken the initiative to be proactive, so we won't be placing the city in a predicament as we've done before to where we did not have enough uh, trucks or have to suspend any type of operations, which we're not going to do that again. That's why we've been very proactive to secure some outside contractors and also some contracts with different commercial leasing companies to make sure that we have adequate supply dealing with the fleet. Right now, internally, we're still having challenges with getting parts in through general services, which they are doing an excellent job of trying to help facilitate and support us, and we really appreciate that. But it's still an ongoing challenge each and every day. We're dealing with getting parts in and getting supply, some of our suppliers and the, also the companies that work on our equipment. It's not just uh, waste services, it's our fleet in general. Uh, that They just are behind. They don't have the staffing and it has delayed us from getting our, our trucks and fleet back. So with that, I, I do want to allow Sharon to come up and talk a little bit about the uh, service delivery operations within waste services. And I will try and keep this brief. I know we're going to be talking about some of this here in a minute with the contracts, but just as John said, there have been a lot of changes uh, going on behind the scenes. And as you all are painfully aware, um, we have gone from uh, a time of uh, a lot of instability, but we are now approaching much more stability. And part of that stability is bringing on um, the two contracts that you will be, uh, that were brought before you today that are going to help us not only stop having to say Red River anywhere uh, in Nashville ever again, but also do what we've been trying to do for several years, which is diversify our collection where we don't have one contractor picking up 70% of our customers and when that one contractor has issues everybody has issues so we will be um, prepared to answer any other questions you have as uh, we talk about the specific legislations thank you any any questions just in general that we want to bring up now councilmember pulley Madam Chair, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment. Uh, I just want to tell you guys that uh, uh, for the last year, it's been a, uh, quite a struggle for all of us, as you well know. And uh, there's a, a lot of members in this room who've been heavily engaged in this process with you all. And uh, we've observed what you guys have been doing and uh, the struggles that you've had to endure and the patience uh, uh, you've put behind your efforts. And I just want to publicly commend you because uh, I, I, what I've seen is an extraordinary effort on the part of Metro Water that constituents don't see. We do, and uh, when we're able to share a lot of things with them that you provide to us, which is very helpful, uh, it does make it a whole lot easier for us as district council members to manage that. So I just want to thank you very much for your effort. I know you've been tirelessly working and, uh, and the, the fruits of your labor showing up. So thank you very much for that. I think we all agree with that. Any other, Council Member Mendez. I, I assume any questions we have about the uh, late filed will take up after you read the caption and we get to it. Council Member Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to echo Council Member Pulley. You, all your work is very much noticed and it's extraordinarily difficult. So thank you both for, for all your extraordinary work. This is, uh, uh, it, it's felt, it's it's getting better. And I know that you're taking the brunt, but uh, my neighbors appreciate you so much. Thank you. 
And I will say both of these people answer emails at 11 o'clock on Saturday night immediately. So they are, they are working hard for us and we appreciate it. Don't go far, we will have more questions when we get to the, to the contracts, but we appreciate the, the overview on that one. So now to get back to the agenda, RS 2022-1651, Allen Evans, Welsh and Bradford. This approves amendment one to a grant from the US Department of Health and Human Services and the Metro Board of Health to provide for the prevention, surveillance, diagnosis and treatment of HIV AIDS and to administer a minority AIDS initiative program. Do you have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? And Council Member Hurt not voting. So eight in favor, zero against, one not voting. Let's see, we have some on consent. Next is RS 2022-1655, sponsors Allen and Young, approves a contract between the Metro government and Waste Pro of Tennessee for the provision of solid waste collection and collection of cards. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I'll, I'll go ahead and ask this question now on this one, but I think it will be relevant for the late filed as well. Um, in looking through the contract on the late file, there was very specific language about what happens when garbage is missed, missed, and um, in and not just you know they, if if you miss it, then it will be filed on the on the hub, and then you'll pass it to them, and then a day later they'll come get it. So that's a two-day process, which. Nonetheless, there's a process to make sure that, that the, the waste does get picked up, which is good. In the late file, I also saw that if that happens like 200 times, then there's an additional um, penalty for that, financial penalty as well, liquidated damages or whatever. So um, can you speak to if that's, if that's kind of gonna be the, the standard way to do that going forward, just to ensure that we don't end up with a whole lot of missed garbage that ends up being, that being picked up two days later becomes routine. Yeah, so currently working with the hub, uh, all the complaints go through the hub at uh, at the time uh, it, it goes through the hub and it's pushed over to City Works where the work order system is. There's an automatic email where the hauler is notified, but the official report to them is at the end of the day around three o'clock, we send them their list of misses that are open. So that would be the misses from today and any from previous days they hadn't already addressed. That is been our, our um, method uh, for many, many years, and we're continuing that going forward. Once they get the list, they have um, one business day to go out and pick it up before any um, liquidated damages or those type of penalties go into place. So in theory, if you report it today before three o'clock, it's gonna get addressed tomorrow. Now, sometimes we've had instances where the haulers were uh, a little behind or didn't get it, but we try very hard to hold them to that. Um, still, it doesn't, always, it doesn't always come out quite that cleanly. And then can you address the, once it gets above a certain number, I think 200 is what I saw for the, um, for the second contract. I mean, because if, if everyone's garbage always gets, up, gets picked up two days late, we're still hearing from a lot of constituents who aren't aren't happy. So I, I think we've built into our contract now that that will not that will not be allowed to happen without a consequence as well. Is that correct? Yes, there are liquidated damages that we can um, assess against them, and there are multiple different categories, including if there's an oil spill, they don't go back and clean it up, and things like that, um, based on the number of complaints or calls coming into the hub. So we have tried to make it so that it is not. Um, uh, you know, too restrictive, but enough that they will feel the pain when they don't get all of the money that they, you know, are inv invoicing us for. And hopefully, therefore, the garbage will get picked up on the day. Absolutely. And then we don't hear from them. That sounds, that sounds great. Okay, other, other questions, either about this contract or in general? Councilmember Syracuse, I saw you reach for your... Yeah, I'll ask a question. Thank you so much. I'm just curious about the CPI uh, piece of uh, the contract that talks about uh, Waste Pro only implementing about 50% of about anything about 5%. Is, was that a negotiated uh, thing? Because right now we're sitting at about, what, 9% CPI? Yes, so the CPI as of last week was 9.1%, yeah. and the previous month was 85 and so forth. And so um, I think you'll hear from the procurement um, group more or less that 5% has become the, the established 
place, but we can't. It's really hard when you're in a negotiation to say, well, it's it's eight and a half percent. Why are you stopping? What's why is our edge at five? And so what we um, did, and this is actually um, consistent across all three of the contracts that have come before you, and it um, is to split the split the pain over that cap, which is you have to risk some and we have to risk some. And so if it's eight and a half, um, so to speak, then that extra three and a half would be split between Metro as well as the hauler. So they would have to take it um, and, and eat and eat that as well. And so that helps us budget and be more consistent. We can expect a 5% escalation, but we can budget a little bit high, higher based on what we're seeing in the market. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good question. Council Member Drevel. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just a quick question. I'm just curious. What is the approximate cost to pick up one household's um, trash? Do you have that by chance? Um, off the top of my head, no, because we've got a comparison chart, but we can provide that to you. Yeah, I'm just curious, the metrics in terms of what is their responsibility, how do they perceive responsibility of picking it up versus trying to get the volume done at a certain point? So are you asking the question of what is their cost to pick up trash? Oh, what's our cost of picking up the, tr the trash? I would just be curious to know. We can divide that out and figure that out for yeah, you, for it, sure. Because it, are they more incentivized to get through quickly or not lose these potential uh, issues where they, they're uh, fined or they're not uh, doing I'm just curious. Y yes, I, 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 so you, you want to understand the incentivi in yeah. incentivizing. Very simple. Thank you. Got you. Great. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. We are voting on uh, the contract with Waste Probe. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? Nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting. Uh, we have two late filed resolutions. First is sponsored by Allen and Evans. This approves a correct correction to amendment one to a grant from the Tennessee Department of Finance and Administration to the Metro Office of Family Safety to fund staffing positions to help manage the multidisciplinary needs of its clients. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Um, Council, I mean, um, Ms. Darby, can you tell us, is this just setting the end date? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's setting the effective date. S setting the effective date to? That's the effective date to August 11th, as opposed to um, early July. It, it was, uh, the state needed to have the effective date moved. Okay, any other questions on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Any not voting? We recommend approval. Nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting. And the second late filed resolution, sponsors Allen approves the assignment and amendment of a contract between the Metro government and Red River Waste Solutions, LP2 Platform Waste Solutions, LLC, for the provision of solid waste collection. Do you have a motion? It moved and seconded. Councilmember Mendez, did you want to speak on this one? Or ask questions? Um, yes, I would. Um, so, and, and these, I guess, are for the department. Um, so I understood that uh, court approval of the transaction to sell the Metro contract to platform was obtained on Friday and closing is expected to be sometime in the next week or so. Um, and I just wanna make sure this legislation we're approving is contingent that that transaction, transaction actually gets to a closing. I, I didn't read it carefully enough to confirm that. Do we have a lawyer in the back? Ms. Deaton Moyer. Our attorney, who is right back there, says no, presently it's not contingent, um, the, but the closing is the week of the 25th. All right. And, and a second comment. Uh, just echoing the same, that's correct. The initial legislation wasn't drafted in a way that if for some reason it didn't go through, that we would have an out. That said, though, um, I. The reason why we late filed it is because we held it into the absolute last moment to make sure that what we were giving you is what we knew was going to happen. So, and I know, council member, that you have a lot of background in this. Um, our bankruptcy attorney is, is, is confident that this is gonna go through. And again, we're um, looking at a closing date of the 25th. July 25th. Right. Okay. Council member, does other questions? Um. The other thing I, I guess I wanted to just ask for a little more detail about is um, I, I do think an important part for the public to understand is that uh, um, uh, it, it, it's not a straight up assignment um, as I think happens a lot of times in bankruptcy court where literally our contract with Red River gets assigned um, to 
um, the the buyer. I think it's more the relationship is being assigned, and then we've got a, a new contract um, with with terms that are different, um, and that Metro has negotiated more aggressive um, default and remedies in the contract with Platform than we had with Red River. Um, and, I, and I think it, it is worth some discussion um, from the department for the public that uh, if for whatever reasons a new provider Platform stumbles, um, there are more robust remedies than, than we've had previously with Red River. And I think that's worth um, some discussion. Thank you. Does someone from Metro Waste want to, I see Ms. Moyer grabbing official pieces of paper. Very official, it was my notes because I thought you might ask that question. Um, so one thing that is different, so you've, you're, this will be the third contract that's coming before you that is a waste contract that's really come for you in the last two months. So here are some of the differences. One is this is not the same term. So this actually keeps the same term as the present Red River contract, which means we'll end it in about two, two years and four months, for those of us counting at home. And then also those outs that we, while we're cautiously hopeful that um, platform waste will perform one as, as well as, if not better, than um, our present contractor, we have um, various non-performance clauses such that we can take away routes for non non uh, non-performance, um, specifically consecutive issue, consecutive um, misses and so forth, anything that has been consistent issues. Um, and then another change that's different from the Red River contract is these rates are market rates, so maybe we don't get in the same place as we once were with Red River. And um, we have limited the scope to 15 routes, um, and, and we have kept our um, our routes that we are presently maintaining. And we also feel like this, the liquidated damages and, um, and are more applicable, as well as there is a termination clause that allows us to get out of it if we really need to, whereas that was not the case in the Red River contract. That, and that particular um, cancel or, um, termination clause for convenience is not in Waste Pro, Waste Pro or Waste Management. That's unique to that one. Thank you. Thank you. Mendez. Um, and I just wanted to comment, uh, especially for the public, and we, we've all heard so many constituent complaints about this. Um, when the Red River bankruptcy case was filed, I, I was asked by the department um, to, because I've, I've got business bankruptcy experience in my law practice to look at it. And it was clear from the word go that Red River was never gonna be a surviving entity. So moving our contract from Red River to somebody else was inevitable. And as we saw all in a very painfully obvious way, um, this city didn't have the capacity to implement a plan B when this bankruptcy case got filed. And the water department had and, and John Honeysucker and everybody back there has worked their tails off to make there be a credible plan B um, uh, if Red River just dissolved. Um, and, and that has, um, I think, dramatically increased Metro's negotiating position as the bankruptcy case to, uh, has been coming to an end. And this is a negotiated contract and, and the very aggressive um, termination provisions that um, were just described are a result of the Water Department's efforts to make there be a plan B that we can um, do it if need be. And, and, and hopefully for the public and garbage getting picked up, which is what we all care about as the highest priority here, this lays the groundwork for um, not just uh, taking a leap of faith with a new provider, but having uh, checks and balances and the ability to pull the plug on them if um, they can't do the job. And so I, I wanted to just add those extra details about the contract and um, the process and thank the Water Department for all their hard work on this. Thank you. Good to make sure everybody understands that. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? We recommend, anyone not voting? We rec recommend approval, nine in favor, zero against, zero not voting. That concludes resolutions. Now we are on bills on second reading. Next up is BL 2022-1250, sponsor Styles, Wells, Tombs, and others. 
This uh, amends Title II of the Metro Code to create the Nashville Entertainment Commission. We have two separate substitutes. I will begin, well, first I'll ask for a motion from the committee. It's been moved and seconded, thank you. And then I will begin with um, Council Member Stiles. Thank you very much, Chair. <clears throat> As this is the, the third time that we have this before us, I just wanted to speak a little bit about how we got here and the work that has been done thus far. <clears throat> First, I would like to ask, of course, for your approval. I would prefer to not defer this and move this forward finally. I've been in Nashville for about 16 years. Prior to being in Nashville, I was an actress in New York, a union member of the SAG, of Screen Actors Guild and of AFTRA, which is the American Federation of Television and Radio. And I was also a member of Actors Equity, which is the theater union, and also been a member of Musicians Union. So I'm very well versed in the needs of performers here in town this is the reason why this has been a project that has been very important to me and even running for this office because I saw the need and the gaps that were here in the city when I first moved here before I stepped away from being a full-time performer. And in doing research of how we could have a legitimate office in Nashville that supports all of our entertainment, everyone knows, knows that we are Music City, but we have many other industries to offer. So film, television, documentaries, we've got digital media, virtual reality, all of these things are coming to Nashville and they need one place to go where you're looking to do a project, there's a place where you can get all your information. And this year, Mayor Cooper committed to creating an office of music, film, and entertainment. And that is after going to him about four or five months ago and letting him know the research that I've been doing for over a year and speaking with other cities, Austin, Savannah, New Orleans, Atlanta, New York, Seattle, figuring out how they're doing things. Some of them have film and music offices, some of them just have film offices. But many of them also have commissions. So now that we are creating this office, having a commission is wise. This is a group of people that would be available to work with this office, assist with promoting and marketing events that are coming here, projects that would like to shoot here. I think it, it would be foolish of us not to move forward in this particular moment because there have been several iterations and the truth is they failed. So if we're going to do something new, we need to start with also new perspective. If it was going to work, it would have worked before. So we have an opportunity now to create a commission to help people feel valued. And it's one of the things that I heard so often, and I noticed myself, is that we kind of phone music in. We know that country music is here, but when it's time to focus on the other entertainment entities, we've left them alone. So creating an entertainment commission is all inclusive. It means that we put attention on music because we know that that is a priority here, but we're also putting it on film and television and all the other entities that are coming to town. I've mentioned this before, but there's a 40 acre studio that's being built right now, a movie studio outside of Davidson County in Hendersonville. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for us to expand and grow and welcome people here to town and having a commission that I have proposed that we you know, whittle down in terms of size to nine members, the two union members that were amended onto the substitute at our previous meeting, those have been determined as IATSE and also SAG-AFTRA. So the union voice will be heard. It's a mix of executives and also boots on the ground so that everyone has an opportunity to have a voice. Being a commission is inclusive. When you call it something else, it becomes more elitist and exclusionary. Thank you, if you've read any of the emails, and we have now had emails not just today, but the last meeting and the meeting before that. They have been very clear in terms of what legislation they are supporting. It is not about uh, whether it is a form email. We get form emails all the time. We have received a mix of form emails as well as personal statements about how they feel about how the industry has been and where they would like to see it going. Forgive me, my notes just went dark.
Okay. There's been some confusion too regarding, and I'm hoping that I am being very clear. What we're talking about today are two pieces of legislation. They are a substitute and they are only about a commission. They are not about the office. The office has had $100,000 set aside in the budget this year for its creation. This commission is a separate entity entirely. The reason why this commission has every single entity and entertainment within it is because this office is going to be focusing on all of those as well. There was no reason to remove music. That was not my preference, so it was never on the table. This is an entertainment commission. The state has an entertainment commission and we're creating an office of music, film, and entertainment. It makes sense that everything is all together. I think it would be very unwise as we sit here and we say that we have been elected by the people in our districts, as we are getting communication from people across the city, letting us know what they're in favor of and why to ignore that for a third time. I think if you haven't heard, you probably will hear frustration because we seem to be playing council matter courtesy games on the floor instead of listening to what we're being told. And I wish that we had had the opportunity to really merge this and come together. Um, unfortunately, you will see that there are similarities between the substitutes, but unfortunately, at the end of the day, it then came down to not what's great to create a commission for the people, but who's gonna get credit and whose name's gonna go first. And, and so that's unfortunate. And I really hope that we will pay attention, one, to the need, there is a need for focused, organization, a commission. There's a need for this office to be created. I hope that you won't dismiss this as the arts, they're not important and who cares about the arts because they are important. And it frustrates me when I hear people make statements like that. It's very unfair considering we have a, a whole group of people that, that are living here and having to leave town to work because we haven't been structured in how we bring work here. So I would ask that you would approve Excuse me, I would ask that you would approve this bill, please. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Other comments or questions on, on this proposed substitute? And again, I'm gonna ask Ms. Darby to remind us, as a committee, what, it, what are our options with regard to making recommendations on both of these substitutes or neither of these substitutes? I believe, uh, I believe this is what I said at the last meeting, that the committee can um, recommend both substitutes on the floor uh, at tomorrow night's meeting, the first substitute, um, if the first substitute were to be a approved and then the second substitute were also to be approved, the second substitute would replace the first substitute. Okay, so any other procedural questions? Okay, any other council member, Sora? Uh, thank you, but that is on the floor, not for the committee. That's correct, it's on the floor. The substitute would still be moved for, you know, the sponsors still have the opportunity to choose to move or not to move a substitute um, on the floor. So you can look at both tonight. You can look at both tonight. Thank you. Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Chair. Um, Director Darby, can we get a like a one pager that outlines the difference between the two substitutes because we this is the third time and uh, to my understanding the the lead sponsors on both have tried to work together and we still have two different substitutes so that we don't have to do a fourth time hopefully uh could we get like a one pager that breaks down the difference between the two. Uh, we've, we've, uh, Hannah has been so kind as to put together a chart to outline the two latest substitutes, but not the other two substitutes that have already been um, uh, submitted in a substitute packet. So. And is that chart available yet, or will it be it soon? It is not technically publicly available at this time, but we can look to make it available to the council tomorrow. That'd be early tomorrow. As early as we can. As yes. early as you can. Thank you, we appreciate that. That's a, that's a great suggestion. I had started my chart, but I'm not done yet. So if I get my done, I'll send it to Hannah. Um, any other questions on that, Council Member Swope? Did you want to speak to that question or do you want to wait for the next? Okay, fair enough. Okay, so we are, we are 
Um, any other discussion on the, the substitute by council member Stiles? Council member Hurt. Well, I'm, I'm a little um, perplexed in a way about what to do because the substitutes are very similar. Uh, similarly to what uh, Councilmember Toombs was asking um, and some of the comments I want to make, I really think probably may speak more to the bill itself as opposed to the substitute, but it, but it is in response to some of the things that the sponsor said. So I'm not sure. I, I, I would just recommend, why don't you go ahead and Share your thoughts now so, and we can loop back in if it needs to come back at another point. Okay, so to me, it's convoluted the way it is. And I think that, you know, the model that we should use is maybe KFC. They say we do chicken right. Mm -hmm. So you do what you do well, you do that right. And if you're going to be an office of film, let's have that office of film. Let's have an office of entertainment. I don't think that they necessarily need to be integrated. I think we need to do things um, progressively, but smartly and slowly to make sure we're doing it right, as opposed to trying to do so many things all together at one time. And, and I think that perhaps it hasn't worked previously because that was what people tried to do. I recall that the Chamber of Commerce and Conventions and Visitors Bureau used to be together. When they separated, it gave them the autonomy to focus on what it is that they do individually and they do it well and they then work better together in their entities. And I think that we might see the same thing is that you become, as, as opposed to being diverse in all of the funds that you have, but you make your money off of that one thing that you do very, very well. And when you're able to do that, then you can diversify on all of the others, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we probably should be looking at and doing, because I think the intent is, is well. And I think the concept of what, what we all want to do, we're trying to get to the same place, but we just don't know the, the, the exact route to get there. So I want to go to this place and get there first. You know, so if I get to Murfreesboro, then I know that I'll be headed to Chattanooga. There you go. Sounds like another substitute. Um, Council Member Suara. Thank you, Chair. I want to push back a little bit um, because for me, I don't know anything about the industry. Um, and so what I've been doing is actually listening to the people that are in the industry to tell us what the preference is. And the majority of the emails that I have received says that they prefer the first substitute. Uh, and for somebody who's a novice who doesn't know anything, I want to count on the people that we're trying to help. It's not my place. If it's accounting now, I can talk about it, but that's not something that I know. The other thing that I think that we should also consider is that we've been focusing on music and we are a music city and that is prevalent and this commission will have music, but maybe it's time that we also look into things that we're not working on, which is the film part of it. So if you have a commission that is all, doesn't mean that they would do one and not do the other. The way that I look at it is that they can work on the music part that they know so well and then look at the opportunity to add the film to it, which is an area that we haven't done. And so that's the way that I interpret all of this. That's my interpretation. But more than anything, uh, you have all the experts not coming together on council and telling us what's the right thing. So for me, I look into the constituents and the people that we're serving and say, what do you want us to do? And the majority of the letters that I have received said we prefer the substitute that actually combines everything. And, and so I'm speaking in support of that substitute. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on the substitute? I want to say this. Council Member Hurt, briefly. Thank you. Please, I'm, I'm speaking on the meetings that I've had with people in the industry more so than I am with the emails that I've read. Thank you. Other comments or questions? 
So we are voting on substitute uh, CM Styles at this point. All those in favor of this substitute, I'm just gonna go ahead and ask for raising hands and hold them up. In favor of the substitute, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. I see four. All against, opposed. All right, two, any not voting? Four, two. That'll be three not voting, I think. Yep. Okay, good discussion. Uh, next is substitute by council member Swope. You're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and, and members of the committee, I, I know we're all tired of talking about this. I know I am. Um, council Lady Styles and I have spent considerable time trying to combine these. And so let me work in reverse order, if I may. Um, Councilwoman Suarez, you're right, you cannot exclude music from film and television. Um, I learned as a director a long time ago, when I'm making a film or I'm making a TV show, your eyes blink 30 times every minute, your ears never do. So audio and music is an absolute critical part of film, television, transmedia, visual elements, virtual reality, the metaverse, the list goes on and on and on. So to, to completely exclude music from an entertainment commission and or board is almost impossible um, for, for that reason. Um, Council Lady Toombs, uh, these, these two substitutes that are before you right now are amazingly similar because everything you're seeing in yellow on the substitute one right now is straight out of my substitute and handwritten by me. And Hannah will attest to this, including most of the substantive languages. The differences between these two reside in, mine has nine member board and Joyce has an 11 member commission. So there's, there's one difference. Secondly, I'm proposing a three-year staggered revolving term limit on each board member versus five. Um, I think five's too long, you get pretty sedentary. I've sat on commissions and boards that sat for five years and you get really bored after three. So a three-year term, term window. I bring up special, special specific things that the board, the National Entertainment Industry Board would, would specifically focus on school awareness functions. In other words, bringing high schoolers and even middle schoolers into the industry much more often and more, and, and putting together mentorship programs, much like all of her middle school has done with their band program. Um, mine also has a distinct different focus on the business elements, specifically the Tennessee Entertainment Commission's franch franchise and excise taxes. Uh, if we're going to build an industry, film, television, music, in anything in this city, what we have to do is work with the state. We do not have a state income tax, as a pro and as a consequence, there are no dedicated funds for film and television or entertainment incentive packages. We compete with Mississippi, with Alabama, with Georgia, with Florida, with all these other states that do have film incentive programs on their books. We can't by law do that. So as a consequence, a group of us, in fact, the group that wrote the NEIB packet that you got last meeting from me, have spent considerable time with the state of Tennessee over the course of the last decade or more to basically pull off this franchise and excise tax incentive. It's a rebate from the state to a production company, whether that production company is from Los Angeles, Hong Kong or Nashville. In other words, we've, we, we've included a local element into that. And that was, it took an act of God to get this passed. If, if this commission and or board, and therein lies another difference between Ms. Stiles' version and mine. I'm calling it a board, she's calling it a commission. Hey, yin and yang. Um, this focuses specifically on targeting that in conjunction with Bob Brains, who runs the Tennessee Entertainment Commission. Um, and Bob is completely supportive of the second substitute you're looking at right here. Um, I, I, other than that, they're identical. And with that, I would ask for your approval. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I appreciate the chart. Council Member Swara. So is there any reason, uh, and, and if I can ask directly to the sponsor, uh, 
Is there a major difference between 11 and 9? I mean, why do we get hung up on 11 and 9 or border commission? I mean... Um, I, I've sat on five of the last six, starting with, you know, Bredesen going through Purcell, Dean, and, and Megan. Those have been, those have ranged in size from 11 to 23, I think was the biggest one. Um, I can tell you right now, if you get over nine members on anything, nothing ever gets done. You wind up with too much, too much dissension. So to me, the smaller this is, the more focused it becomes and the more effective it becomes. So I, I'm a fan of nine versus 11. So if I may ask, for a commission that is supposed to do film, entertainment, and music as well, mm -hmm. does a larger number allow you to have more people? And again, I'm just trying to play whatever I'm playing here. They're all interconnected. I mean, every studio I've ever owned in my life, whether it be a film TV, a film, t a film studio, or a TV studio, or a music recording facility, it does it all. It's all wrapped into one thing. Um, which is why it's very hard to extricate it. Now, when it comes to live musical performances, that's a whole different ballgame. That is a completely different industry. Um, performance, touring, soundstage and lighting, things like that, that's a different world. But when it comes to film, television, and, and music for film and TV, and what is now transmedia, the metaverse, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, all of that falls into this same lump of stuff that any studio owner, any anybody in this industry does all of it. You and and my, my last other. question, and thanks for answering them, is on the franchise and insights tax incentive. Um, so, I mean, does he have to, if it's not in the substitute, will we still not get it? It's for anybody that is in industry, right? What does I, don't, that I don't know, no, no, it, 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 has been, it has been copied and pasted into the first substitute as well, but it's exactly the same language I wrote in the substitute too. Thank you. Thank Council you. Member Stiles, and then maybe we're ready to vote. Council Member Stiles. Thank you, Chair. If I may respond to the question regarding uh, board and commission. Yes, you may. So <clears throat> in having conversations, with people within the industry that are that are currently working now, day in and day out, not in the past, but right now, the preference was the term commission because it was more inclusionary, whereas board feels elitist and exclusionary. And so that is why it is a commission and not a board. Thank you for that. Council Member Toombs. Oh. Sorry, Miss. Thank you, Chair. Um, and and in listen and, and thank you, uh, Councilman Swope, for um, pointing out the differences between the two substitutes. Those are the notes that I, that I had. Um, and honestly, Chair, there's not much difference between these two substitutes. Um, you know, the the one drafted by Councilwoman Styles, like Councilwoman Suara, I've received the most emails in support of that one. Um, and perhaps that's because they're so similar. I, I don't know if the folks who have emailed me have read uh, Councilman Swope's uh, substitute, but the bulk of the support that I've received has been for Councilwoman Styles' substitute. So I think that that's the way we should go. Um, and perhaps down the road there could be some additional tweaking. Um, but I would hope that. Uh, we do choose uh, Councilwoman Styles substitute so that we can move forward with this and, and not defer it again. Um, I mean, th there's not much difference between the two. We, we've made progress. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so far everybody's had four or five minutes to talk, so we're not gonna get into a, an extended debate. I will, I will uh, go back to each sponsor one more time and then, and then let's finish up our voting. Council Member Swope. Thank you. Um, the, the one thing I will add is it, it, we, we had the opportunity to inundate you with a thousand emails on this, on the second substitute, and we chose not to do it. There was one letter sent to you this morning from the friends of the entertainment industry. Uh, th this includes most of the business owners in this city. Um, it was a collective letter that we all wrote. Um, and, and one of the authors is sitting right there, Jonathan Zayden, who used to run the opera here in town. So. Um, there is support. I, I, I just didn't want to end a day. So we get enough emails. Thank you. Duly noted. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on the SWOPE substitute? Councilmember Syracuse. 
just a uh, point of order, uh, Chair. Are, are we gonna talk about this after we debate these substitutes? We will, I guess, vote on the bill as substituted, substituted. Is that when you wanna weigh in? Yes. Okay, I will, I will make sure we come back to that. So we are currently voting on the substitute and then we will vote on the bill as substituted twice. Council Member Hurt. So I want a point of order also. So what if both substitutes pass? The committee can recommend both substitutes tonight. On the floor tomorrow night, this body, the entire body will have to decide. <coughs> Fair enough. Okay, so we are voting on the swope substitute. All those in favor of the swope substitute, raise your hand high and hold it up so I can count. One, two, thank you. Any opposed? Raise your hand high. One, bunch of undecideds. That would be six, not voting. Okay, now we are back to the bill as substituted and substituted and council member Syracuse, you would raise your hand. Thank you, chair. Um, where to begin? Um, I'll start with the, 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 the sponsor has a pattern now. Legislate first, ask questions later. Whether it's animals, garages, and now the entire entertainment industry. How can you possibly pass a piece of legislation that, in, that has zero engagement with the most important industry in the city and then claim that you are a, a leader in this industry and pass a bill that tells the industry that this is how you will be organized and this will help you. That's asinine. It's, it's a absolutely uh, inappropriate. Um, nobody in my industry has been uh, engaged with ab about this. I think that this industry in the city deserves a little more respect than that, that has been shown here. I have a problem uh, um, ultimately with, with both substitutes. I would lean towards uh, council member Swopes just because of his 30 years of experience uh, in, in this industry, but I don't like either of them fundamentally because they are too broad. It needs to focus on a film industry. Um, there, there are immediate needs within the film industry that, that need to be addressed that are very different from the music industry supporting affordable housing, healthcare, things like that for creatives within the industry, supporting music venues. One of the substitutes has music venue owners crossed out, the other does not. Does that mean one substitute favors music venue owners over the other? Um, one uh, uh, in the definition, um, I don't even agree with the music industry definition for uh, e e either one of these. Uh, one has publishing rights organizations within the definition of music industry. The other puts publishing rights organizations within the film industry. I Got news for you. There's no such thing as a publishing rights organization. I've been working for one for almost 25 years. It's called a performing rights organization. I, I think this is poorly written. It's a mess at this point because it's gone through two or three different substitutes. Um, I, I am in favor of s scrapping this and starting over with engagement first within the industry. There's not even in, in, uh, uh, in support across the film industry um, uh, uh, about these. Um, if we have to pick one, um, I, I, I really have a hard time. That's why I'm not voting for e either substitute. But you cannot claim that you have all the answers to the uh, woes of the uh, one specific sector of our economy here and, and claim that this is gonna solve all, all the issues. Um, it's personally insulting to me that I have had conversations before uh, the sponsor filed this uh, about the efforts that I've been taking over the past four or five years, slowly but surely, obviously given a two uh, year break for the pandemic, um, but to get a more of a, an advisory council, a, um, um, a group of industry leaders that we can uh, then figure out what worked, what didn't, get uh, an RFP out there that I now have out there um, and get a uh, consultant to help us uh, figure out, just like we do, did with homelessness, about what is the right structure, learning from what we did right, what we did wrong, peer and aspirational cities, that's the right approach to take. This is simply just not the right approach to take. We had to kill the animal control bill because it had no engagement with the animal rights advocates. 
So honestly, I'd like to cancel this whole thing, start from scratch on a focus like a laser film commission. That's what needs to happen. And don't disrespect the whole music industry by uh, writing something that has zero engagement with them. Thank you. I, I would move to, def uh, well, you know what, I'm not even going to vote to defer. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, vote just like the animal control uh, legislation and, and just be, be done with it tomorrow. Okay, I think that just means we'll, we'll vote. All right, Councilmember Stiles, and then we'll take the vote. Councilmember Stiles. Oops, there you go. Thank you, Chair. Um, now that we're done with Councilmember Syracuse tantrum, the fact of the matter is I have actually been in this business for quite some time. And I'm not, as I have accused of being dictatorial, that is not what I am doing. And I have had over a year of dealing with people within both industries. There's a huge ego problem happening amongst this. And if you would like to be accusatory, Council Member Syracuse, it's very small of you. All right, Council But you members, can do that. The rest of us just need help because because we don't know this industry. So we don't need to deal with, with egos and tantrums. And I understand that this is very important to y'all and very personal, but the rest of us, we just need facts. So Can I mention facts, the RFP, the RFP that we that we voted on that is specifically you may, for you music venues? You about facts. Did we just lose our quorum or not? Okay, we have not lost your quorum. Yes, ma'am. We voted $300,000 for music venues. That's what that money is for. So if that's going to change, then that needs to also come before the body again. Council Member Syracuse cannot just decide that we're going to throw some other deliverables on it, which is what he mentioned at our last meeting. As you think about this, please do not just go by what I'm saying. As Council Member Zwara said, listen and read the emails that you're being sent. Not every single email is a form email. There are people that are frustrated about how things have been done in this city and we cannot afford, we really can't have something separate. When I started these conversations in terms of how other offices had been created, the sentiment from across the board in terms of having public-private partnership was that everything was inclusionary. Everything was together and that it wasn't separate. And that's how it got to that place. I did not just make that up on my own. And I do not think you know, hurling insults is the way to promote any legislation or, or attempt to kill it. So I hope that we could be better than that and bigger than that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other factual comments? All right. I appreciate this is a passionate subject, but we do need to stick to facts just because a lot of us have a lot to learn about this. So if there is no other discussion, um, I will encourage people to do a lot of homework tonight and we will vote on the bill as substituted. All those in favor of the concept of the bill in general, I think, is what we're voting on. Please raise your hand high and keep it up. One, two. Any opposed to the concept in general? One. Abstain. You're a no. Council Member Swope, are you a no? I mean, not Council Member Syracuse, are you a no? Abstain. Okay. So we have two in, two in favor, one against, and how many are left in the room now? One. Two, three, four, five, six. So there are three not voting. Okay. We have eight people. We have eight people yeah. still? All right, then that's two, one, five not voting. Okay. All right, uh, next is BL 2022-1344, Sponsors Hall. I do not have a letter from the sponsor, so it's deferred by rule. Any other business that needs to come before the body? All right, we are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.